Welcome everyone to Beulah Presbyterian Church's online Good Friday Tenebrae service. This service is an adaptation of the ancient Tenebrae service dating back to the 8th century. The literal translation of the Latin word Tenebrae is darkness. In this service, after each scripture reading, a candle is extinguished. This is symbolic of the fading light of the world as Christ was departing from it. We invite you to come and walk with us through the valley of death as Jesus gave his life for us. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. Let us pray. King of glory, we adore you, our Savior and Lord. You suffered on the cross and gave your life as a ransom for many. We offer our worship today out of unspeakable gratitude. By your Holy Spirit, open our eyes that we may see in new ways the depth of your love for us. In your name we pray. Amen. He came out and went, as was his custom. To the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will be done, but yours. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood. When he got up from prayer, he came to his disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Oh, to die. 
While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said, Judas, is it with the kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they said, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this, and he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Merciful and loving God, we meet each other today at the foot of the cross. We ask for your forgiveness as those who inflict wounds on one another, as those who spurn your love and pursue only our own personal interests, as those who put others on trial and refuse to forgive. Be merciful to us, O God, and grant us the will to return to you and to love one another as Jesus has loved us. Savior, Jesus Christ, you are the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We thank you for your amazing love, that you were willing to die for us while we were still in sin. And now, in you, we are reconciled to God. Lord Jesus Christ, being human, you knew the pain the cross would inflict. Being divine, you knew it was the only way we could be redeemed. We praise you. We thank you for willingly suffering a cruel death 
so that we may experience new life in you and the glories of heaven. While your death and resurrection assure us of your victory over evil, Lord, we have yet to experience that reality in its fullness. And so we bring our prayers to you. We pray for the peoples of the earth, for those in authority among them. We pray for the President of the United States, for legislative bodies and the courts. We pray for all the leaders of all the nations. Lord, may they be women and men who seek to serve the common good, and may they turn to you for wisdom in seeking justice and truth. We pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind. We pray for the hungry and homeless. We pray for those who are prisoners and those who are oppressed and suffer persecution. We pray for those who sorrow and are bereaved. We pray for any whose pain is deep and those who have lost hope. Gracious and compassionate God, look with mercy upon your church around the world. Empower us as your people to increase our courage and strengthen our faith and inspire us to be your witnesses to all people. Bring to completion your saving work so that the whole world may see all things made new. In the name of Jesus Christ alone, we bring our prayers and pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. But then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly.
Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They begin to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priest and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began even to this place. Then Pilate then called together the chief priest, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here, I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. But they all shouted out, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man whom they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and they handed Jesus over as they wished. Oh,
As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one, the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him saying, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise.
It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn into two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. They returned and prepared spices and ointments.
And now, friends, may you find in the cross a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and assurance that your sins are forgiven. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>